Hello and welcome to our People in Transformation webinar with um, today's subject all about embracing a flexible working culture and achieving a better work-life balance. And I'm delighted to say that interestingly we've got a panel joining us today, which we um, panel discussion, which we hope everyone's going to enjoy. So let's move on to the next slide. Okay. So just to let you know today's team and who's in the room. So myself, hi, I'm Nicola, Nicola Gorge, a People and Transformation consultant hosting today. Um, I am joined by my colleague Dave, David Llewellyn there, um, and <laughs> Dave helping out in the background. And we've also got, as I mentioned, we've got four panel members, guest members joining us, which is great. Um, and I just, you can see on the slide, we have Liz Perry, Michelle Sampson, Jazz Kaur, and Sue Monk. Um, but I will ask them each to individually introduce themselves in a short moment. So briefly, what we're covering today's uh, session, it's an overview and I'm going to briefly define work-life balance, flexible working and to highlight the importance. Um, and then we'll get going with our guest panel discussion and finish with a final thought. And we anticipate being approximately half an hour or more to give you a time check. So, work-life balance. What is work-life balance? It's an equilibrium between demands of personal, professional and family life. It improves health and helps reduce stress and increases employee engagement and productivity. Um, as an important note, um, work-life balance is the top voluntary reason for leaving, um, which is stated by um, our employees leaving us in our MBT leaving surveys and therefore is something of importance that we need to consider. Work-life balance. Flexible working. Flexible working allows employees to vary the amount, timing or location of their work where applicable and usually to the benefit of the individual and the organisation. So it's key to know it's not only about part-time working. Um, it benefits, uh, sorry, benefits include boosting employee performance and engagement and career development. Also an increase in gender diversity higher retention rates and a decrease in sick leave. Okay. So flexible working, it is currently being discussed in many surveys um, across all professions and it is becoming an expected norm in society for all. And just to highlight three points, a wide range of surveys are indicating that the next generation, um, the younger people amongst us, are viewing flexibility more importantly than pay or seniority. Individuals are telling us that they state they could in fact contribute more if they were able to work flexibly and more than four in five say flexible working is important when considering a new job and that's just a couple of, of highlights from many. So now it will be great to move towards our panel uh, discussion and so what I'm going to do we're going to turn around the uh, laptop computer and ask each of the panel members in turn, if they would mind introducing themselves. And uh, the first question, which I just come on to, just to let you know, we might just make a, take a moment for the camera to get all of the panel members in. So lovely. So now we can see our lovely guests. So thank you and welcome, guests, for coming this morning. Um, yeah, I'm going to, if each of you would like to just briefly introduce yourselves and then perhaps in no more than 30 seconds. Um, share with us something positive and a meaningful action to contribute to your own healthy work-life balance. Um, I'll go first. Thank you. Um, thanks, Nick. I'm Liz Perry. I'm Director of People. Um, and I thought the example that I would share is that um, I, uh, I'm on a long call roster. I'm on the executive on call roster. And that requires us to um, be uh, available 24-7 for a week. Um, and you're never quite sure if you're going to need to come in at the weekend um, to help the team that are here operationally at the weekend and to just help with staffing and those sorts of things. So I always book out a day the week after um, in case I need to take some time back because it's always easier to stand that down if you plan it in advance than it is to try and fit it in when you've been working for seven days. Lovely. <laughs> I'm Sue Monk, I'm the Assistant Director of Nursing. I um, learned very early on in my career from a very inspirational woman sister I worked with. 
to just really plan my annual leave in advance. So I try to book a week every six to eight weeks so that there's a time where I know I've got some downtime and I can always try and have something nice within it, even if that's just walking the dog, going to see friends. So yeah, just making sure that I've got time booked in to have on. Yeah. Hello, um, I'm Michelle Sampson. Um, I do a Monday fortnight, which is great. So I do slightly longer days, which naturally seem to happen, as we all know. But it means I plan it, so I have it in my schedule over maybe six, eight weeks. So then I know I can plan, like you, funding, normal things, life things, kids, dogs, the usual. So yeah, that really helps me. Hi, everyone. My name is Jazz Cor. I'm the head of equality, diversity, and inclusion. Um, well, it's quite a small practical thing, which sometimes might not all come into uh, work life balance. I try and take one day in the week where I actually have my lunch away from the desk. So that's just once a week, probably with a colleague that gives me some downtime, a bit of time to chat, but also if I actually sit down and have a meal. Um, so yeah, that's me. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Fantastic to actually hear some real life examples. And sometimes it's just good to talk and remind ourselves what we can do by talking to our colleagues and you know they're, they're not necessarily real amazing things they're real practical things that we often forget to do so thank you for sharing that so i'm going to pose the, the first question and invite um all of you to start talking and discussing amongst yourselves as a, as a process so as indicated in the slides today's society demands a more flexible work-life balance and as you said it is backed up by the responses we get in our leader surveys um, which indicates a poor work-life balance is the most frequent reason for deciding to exit employment with a trust currently. So, question, can you give us one or two steps that we can take in practice to improve flexible workers and work-life balance for our employees? Over to you. Mm. My brain was slightly just... Yes, yeah. yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all right. It's it's a a yeah, yeah. So can you give us one or two steps that we can take in practice to improve flexible working and a work-life balance? I think talking about it as a team, adding a bit of structure into it. So um, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm really guilty of having very good intentions about what I'll do when I get home. And then I get home and think, oh, well, actually, I'm, I'm too tired. But actually, if you're sharing some of that responsibility with your team, they can help you with that. So if you say, actually, on X date, I am going to leave dead on time um, because on the way home, I'm going to go and do this class and be really open about yeah. that and get everyone else to share what their commitment yeah. is and what they want to do. It means that not only am I more likely to do it myself, <laughs> um, but actually my colleagues will one help me and say, aren't you supposed to go into go and do that now? But also they'll help you keep your diary free so that things don't run over and mean that you can't do those things. I suppose there's also something about um, we tend to make assumptions when we think about work-life balance and we, we know what it is that the person wants. Yeah. So I suppose one of the really important things is to sort of just keep an open mind because it means different things at different times. Yeah. Um, I might be 25 and single, but I still want flexible working and work-life yeah. balance. Yeah. Um, and my reasons are less justified than the other. Yeah. Yeah. That's quite, I think we tend to get we often think about flexible working when people have been on maternity or paternity leave, um, and also when people have older relatives, but we don't tend to think about it as much, I think, as, as managers and leaders at all the different phases of life. And it's equally important. Absolutely, yeah. 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 And that balancing that is how we need to keep all managers. How you balance all the different competing priorities in our varied ages of a workforce. Yeah. yeah. Just adding those assumptions that we made, so they're all stereotypes essentially, yeah. aren't they? they are. Yeah, so yeah. adding those stereotypes with colleagues and having an open and transparent yeah. discussion, but you can step back from that. I think it's about having a discussion with ourselves around what does that actually mean for me. So if I take a step back and really think about it, actually, it might not mean a massive amount, mm -hmm. it might mean just a little bit of a tweak yeah. or a lunchtime here and there. So, actually, if someone offered I've been offered flexible working and work life balance. Yeah. Actually, in real terms, what does that mean? Is it all caveated with disruption? Is, it, is the assumption, but actually, is there real productivity and benefit? If you look at all the research, that's where it leads to. It's quite a pain, is it? Just having that discussion with ourselves. At first, that, for me, that's a tangible step, not with yourself. Um, and I think people think, people, I've had conversations with people and they said, and of course, I can't change my hours, and I can't be getting a part of that. And I'm like, 
Oh, okay, who did you discuss that with? And they're like, oh. Well, okay, so hang on. <laughs> You're thinking about leaving a job, but you haven't had, and you've made all these assumptions about what you can't do. We haven't actually had a conversation because probably work around most, if not all of those things. And people are, it's, 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 it's breaking those things. I hear people say, yeah, I can't, and I can't. And if you hear I can't often enough, you believe it, but actually it's not based on anything. It's just an assumption. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. yeah. If you're the person that wants to, um, that wants to change the way you work, if you're not given an inroad into the conversation yeah. at work by a colleague or by someone else, it's a really difficult conversation to start because it's, really, it's about you and they're quite difficult conversations to start with I want or I need. Yeah. And it's how you can have those conversations factored into normal catch ups at work with how are yeah. you, is everything all right, how do you have a thing, rather than people sitting thinking, oh, God, I've got to go in today and ask. Yeah. And actually, the, we've built questions into the um, preparation form for appraisals now yeah, to yeah. talk about how how are you, you know, not just about work and your objectives, but how's your work life balance, how are you feeling like coming to work, just on those very simple sliding yeah. scales. And they're quite good in for having those yeah, conversations. Yeah. They're all actually, I'm, I'm, I'm quite surprised by this. Tell me about that. Yeah. And, and it opens the doors for people. Yeah. yeah. This comes back, back to trust, it. actually. Yeah. Yeah. We all trust that we can find it's not about just doing something for some sake. Mm -hmm. It is about a swim class might be really important to me. But actually, I shouldn't have to justify that because that's about something that I want. Actually, it's better. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? And does it matter that you don't think it matters? Actually, it doesn't. Let me just think about what that means to me. Yeah. yeah. So actually, yeah. trusting each other and trusting yourself. I yeah. think it's quite easy, like you said, just to say no. Well, that conversation itself is just yeah. destroying. Can you show your example of people making assumptions before they even ask questions really? Yeah. Important. Because I think from a, a manager perspective, I would always much rather be able to keep my really good team members, even if I don't know what's happened for less time than yeah. more. Yeah. Once that's a yeah. short period or a longer period, then there's some straw. But yeah. sometimes I've had to have that conversation with people who are either leave. And why are you leaving? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. life's difficult for X, Y, and Z reason. I'll ask you know, I'm conscious about the impact that's having on work as well. Well, the point with the impact on work is not always the same as an individual work is about, is it? Yeah. But two, actually, let's talk about that yeah. and we can work out a different arrangement for people to talk to it and see if that does the trick. Usually it does. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's about changing the culture yeah. to what you said about the week. We've got a well being thing in the elections office and given to all the areas and everything. It was on Twitter and it's really basic things like the same idea. Don't say yes to things you don't want to, make sure your workload is manageable, keep yeah. away from the desk. Yeah, the hydration <laughs> that we support. <laughs> and, um, and, it, and, and still in the office, and I find myself doing it, so I'll say, I've got to leave early today. What I mean is I've got to leave on time. Yeah. yeah. I've got to leave on time, but it's earlier than I left yesterday, so I found it in the morning. But now what's interesting is we challenge each other, and the colleagues are like, we're leaving at two. Oh, no, 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 I'm leaving at four. That's doing leaving on time. Yes, yeah, leave more time. Yes, yeah, thank you for correcting me. So just trying to change that culture, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you, and if you leave a minute early, I'm kind of first to the I can't in case anyone sees me, even though I was two hours late with a phone. It's just changing that culture. Yeah. So that's where we need to make those conversations once more open. Yeah. And that's yeah. the And uh, we all know, don't we, there's times in our lives where we can give much more, and there's times in our lives where we can give the right amount. But it's not less, it's just the right amount. And yeah. that's the nature of the NHS, so and that's yeah. that one really far. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel guilty yeah. when you've given more, but it's actually yeah. yeah, bringing it back in line to actually the requirements. Yeah. yeah. And the main thing is, have you been able to do what's your core job? Yeah. What you're there yeah. to do? And if you have, then yeah, then that's fine. Don't need to do anything. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. Some really good practical e examples there. And I just heard um, you mentioned the world cult the word culture. So even if it's a summary, perhaps, of what you've already mentioned, what really needs to change in order that MBT becomes recognised as an employer truly embracing a flexible working culture? What needs to change? I think you've already alluded to something that it's about the conversation and the mistrust and assumptions, but getting under that conversation, so getting under why managers are worried about flexible working requests and there's lots of really valid reasons why they worry about it, and there's some that are more 
practical that we can work through and there are some that the organisation has to own and help work through but until we really flush out all those concerns and those barriers however legitimate or not they are and have the conversation I think it's going to be really tricky for us but I think we're, we're getting better at it I think we are I think one of the things that's definitely there is that openness in teams as well yeah. so I'm thinking from a from a ward system or charge nurse perspective you know they're, they're very busy people and trying to manage your roster Keep everybody happy, that's a really difficult thing to do. Yeah. But actually, for every person that wants to work nights, there's probably somebody sitting there going, I hate nights, I really just want to work day. Yeah. And it's about how we have those conversations and allow the team to decide how they are happy to work as well, rather than us assume that actually that's not fair. Because people talk about fairness quite a lot, but it's an assumed fairness yeah. without yeah. actually knowing that Michelle said a lot about, I can't. Well, actually, mm. if we haven't asked or looked and mm. seen, then actually, yeah. it, it, there's probably for each person, there's probably somebody else thinking, well, why would I like to do the opposite of that? And we just yeah. need to, to find a way of having those really open conversations with teams that aren't based on judgment or yeah. blame. Yeah. Looks like the Christmas on duty. So much anxiety. Yeah, that was a happy year. I'm really happy. I'm really happy. The Christmas on duty. Well, I used to get my and sister, and I just used to put all the chefs on the wall, and I'd be like, you all have got you all here, and I'm going to walk away, and I'm going to see what happens, and it always wrote itself. It's yeah. it. it always wrote itself, because people, people are genuinely yeah. pretty sensible and want different things. And and I trust that this is going to yeah. work, and it would, yeah. you'd have one chef, okay, go guys, that's not going to happen, is it? Because you've got one person on the lake, you spent it on the early. And then they would all talk amongst themselves, and it, it genuinely every year would sort of fell. And it's really important to yeah. share that responsibility, yeah. and it's not just your responsibility, mm. it's making sure that people there to deliver care yeah. to the patient. Yeah. It's a team responsibility. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I hear them say, well, I travel to see my family, but I'm not an interested, so actually, I'll be. And you hear, you hear the conversations, and it's all different things for different people. And if you can do those things at what is probably one of the busier festive seasons, yeah, exactly. regardless of your religions or beliefs, there are somebody that you want to see or something you want to do around the yeah. holiday time. If you can do it at the busier time, then actually yeah. the rest of the year should be a little bit easier. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> and that comes to some of the things in terms of trouble and that transparency. Yeah. Yeah. It's not necessarily going to be different, but it is very much about more of trust and transparency piece and a lot of people get uh, nervous with equality yeah. actually i did this person's got this and this person's got that so equality is about quality of outcome and quality of experience but it's not about giving everybody the same thing yeah. and that's yeah. a real big illusion that we have yeah. and nervousness around is the perception about equality right have i done the right thing i'm doing too much i'm doing too less yeah and then this intrinsic feeling of oh nervousness that appears, but actually you know, having those discussions, empowering each other with the ownership of the team, mm -hmm. like you said, it's with everybody, mm -hmm. and actually the organisational goal and outcomes are everybody's summit. So that trust bit and the transparency, collaboratively, you just keep kind of building on that, then when? Yeah. yeah. Any other considerations to share with managers when, de when dealing with these aspects of fairness? Away. I would say sometimes it's it's in, inherent and we're having a conversation with ourselves. That's the most challenging bit. And there's this um, persona of what a manager should look like. It's almost, you know, like you're standing proud and you're strong for the team. Actually talk to your colleagues, yeah, and share some of your anxieties. But do that with the caveat of the end goal in sight. That's the thing that I would say. Actually, what is the end goal that you're trying to deliver? And sometimes vulnerability can be really endearing. Actually, if you don't know what to do, you're sharing that. Come on, let's chip in and work it out together because it's a collective challenge. Yeah, you're, um, not, you're, not, you're not raising the problem, you're asking to talk no. about it. Yeah, that yeah. bit, I think, because of the nature of our organisation, sometimes we do just want to be strong and we want to protect our team. Yeah. But actually, yeah. and that sometimes has the opposite effect. I think also as well, that little bit about, you know, don't make rash decisions, don't feel that you need to give an answer straight away. Yeah. You know, so go and talk to colleagues. Mm -hmm. But sometimes actually it's also, you know, going more, you know, so thinking from a nursing perspective, you know, we all know the different shifts, the different times. Mm -hmm. 
actually, do you know what? I, let me go away, see what I can do. And if I can't fix that, head, where can I find you yeah. something mm -hmm. that meets what you need, that allows you to remain at work? And so those types of conversations, and actually you often find when there's a team network that they often do come up with. Yeah. The solution. That's what sure about. We're a big yeah. old organisation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we should be able to find yeah. 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 But I do understand. I do hear you. Also. They do have an anxiety around. But I do that person. Yeah. But it might be only that person. What's that? Do that. So it's that anxiety. Yeah. 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 shared with us that a supporting flexible working request can be a challenge which I think you can share with us. Can you share any particular personal examples, stories um, or scenarios where there's been a real positive impact um, on the team or the workflow where the benefits have outweighed all those initial concerns that you've been talking about already? Thank you, Dennis. Well, I suppose, um We've um, got a couple of examples within teams where we've looked at annualised hours. Mm. Again, because of uh, you talked about on calls and, and shift rotors and needing to be around at different times of the day, that have meant that that's allowed for flexibility. So, by the virtue of the annualised hours, by the time you add in all those other times, it actually means that they're fulfilling their contract. Yeah. They're just doing it in a different way. Mm -hmm. And we've got within those teams where we've got e rostering, the system's already there. So there's, um, you know, historically people used to worry that people think, oh, they didn't work their hours, but actually it's, it's all on the system, it's all there, and actually that means yeah. everybody writes it down as it is, it doesn't need to be submitted, it's all on the system, but actually that allows that flexibility, um, but also actually they often find they end up working too many hours, you're saying to that, yeah. actually, you, you, you know, you're, you're over your hours, so you need to pull back and take some more days off. I think that is one of the benefits of um, when you kind of accommodate flexible working or working people, you do you get more from them. Yeah. And I, I guess, Jeff, it's your point yeah. about you build more trust with the team, yeah. don't you? Yeah. And it's, well, yeah, we're, we're, we're giving you something in terms of supporting you, but that person then feels more connected to the organisation or not. You get more back from people when they're happy yeah. and they're able to balance more well, they they and yeah. they'll, they'll yeah. give you more when they're yeah. asked to do more. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Which just helps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so some of the CNS teams, it's actually really good for people that want to work their hours. And then it opens up opportunities because everybody can do it in a kind of Friday afternoon. Because everything in the Green Apple is free <laughs> on a Friday afternoon or a late evening. So sometimes you're like, oh, I haven't got the patients in these. Somebody wants to work their days. And it's like, oh, actually, so if you do longer days but less, actually that really fits with our service because we can get this thing in here that we can't do in four hours because there's no space. So it's been really beneficial to the person, the patient and the service, which is bingo. Yeah. That's what you want, isn't it? It's all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the piece, isn't it? Is that actually don't have that conversation with yourself and just assume it can't be done. Yeah. Because and that is what happens. Is like, oh, I'm gonna have to leave the whole I'm gonna have to well, you think, and then you um, say, I'm like, well, hang on, this fits with that thing you're worried about, and that fits with that. And actually, this is perfect. 
And that's exactly what happened uh, a few years ago to myself. I was managing a big community screening team um, full of around five nurses and around six nurses. And then um, there were two nurses that were going to leave. And it was all, for me, it was quite a small challenge because one of them had, she didn't want to take a child up from school two days a week. Mm. And another colleague said, actually, I never really thought about it, but there is a swimming class club that I want to join. I've never kind of had the thing to if I if you do those two and I can do that bit for you, you can just swap. And it was kind of real practical. Just done. Just done, done yeah. Done, yeah. Right? Yeah. And it was then yeah. normalising paperwork, but it was almost a case of that parent was gonna leave because yeah. of that small little yeah. challenge that they hadn't had a discussion about. I think that's what you just touched on John, but it's really important. That was about formalising it and that's not really the paper, is it? It's just no, a, a formal yeah. record of what you yeah, and then reviewing it yeah. is yeah. really important, and that helps the fairness, doesn't it? Yeah. Actually, as you said, your your needs and circumstances change, so you don't want to agree something forever that yeah. only needed for six, twelve months, yeah. and then gives you less mm -hmm. flexibility to talk to other people about. So reviewing something like this from both sides, yeah. the individuals and the organisation, is really important. Yeah. And it's also really important as well because if I've agreed that or Jan yeah. and then I leave, yeah. there's nothing for Michelle when Michelle yeah. comes to know that that's what you've yeah. got. And that causes stress and worry for people. Yeah. So that, that making it clear and putting it down, make sure that it's that you that it's there and that you're secure mm -hmm. and you know that you've got that agreement. Yeah. And it doesn't matter who, you know, your manager might change, but that historical knowledge will continue until the new date. Yeah. Or even before, so in yeah. terms of you like being able to talk about it mm -hmm. and actually say, you know what, there's been a change of circuits. Not even there's been a change of circuits, but sometimes I don't do it anymore. Actually, it's not working. Yeah. 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 Do, do you know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Even before you're kind of going down that road and so that conversation with self again, actually, is it okay for me to want to change because of the social rules? To get this in the first place. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then it comes back to do I trust myself? Well, yeah, I do. So why am I having this, not having this conversation outside of me in my own head? Because yeah. by the time we said it out loud, this is a massive thing that doesn't actually need to be that big. Yeah. And that trying it's really important, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. I'm actually, for a manager who thinks, oh, I really want to help this person, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah. You could say, look, I'm not sure, but let's give it a go for yeah. three, six months, yeah. and then have a review about it. I'm not making a commitment beyond that time, but I'll yeah. do my very best to make this happen. So then you can try that in a second time. Mm. Yeah. It's scary. It is, because it's sad that people think they're watching and say they are all these. Yeah. So there's like a million different <laughs> options yeah. here, but it's kind of sort of fantasizing the they get themselves stressed and they can't think it's this or this. So it'd be really interesting to know, you know, you were saying about the exit issues, it'd be really interesting to unpick what conversations had happened before and mm -hmm. had there been options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it'd be really interesting to know that, wouldn't it? And actually, if people aren't receiving the same conversation that we would want to have with our team, it's hard for people yeah. to not get a positive response. We need to work with those people who are just doing it down. Why what happened, happened, yeah. And, how we, uh, yeah. and the fact of having that question in the appraisal paperwork yeah. now when you're preparing is really good. And then what we need to do then is how you pick that up through the year. So it's not just a conversation that you have once, mm -hmm. but it primes that conversation about how we get teams to be thinking actually to check in for more year. Yeah. You know, so you, you don't have to wait till that one time. You can It yeah, has changed the shape of what I've done actually, have yeah. 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 CNSs from uh, in different specialties um, who have just come with a team of two that both have major bereavement, they both lost a parent in the same year. It was a really difficult, challenging year, but they delivered this fabulous service. The service didn't know that anything traumatic had happened to these people and did both their appraisal separately and they both came with, we haven't achieved anything this year. Okay, you have a major bereavement, you have very limited time. To Work and you have delivered an amazing service, the same as you did before. I think that's a positive. I'm going to take that as an achievement. And when I talk to them about let's get forward to any day with you, let's look at support, let's look at resilience, let's not wait till you have a horrible, and let's think about how we manage you. They just, they just changed into different people. It was just a 
appraisal just kind of changed halfway through when I take like, well, run, run to them. Yeah, but you're two people who live on an amazing service. You're really bad at your organization. It's possible to support them. It was so interesting that they were just really blown away by all and before we've agreed to go and spend a day with them and do a bit of looking at their service. So yeah, it, it is changing the conversation, so I find it really helpful. Oh gosh, I've had a real <laughs> variety of feelings and examples, but it's all so relevant and, and hopefully our, our viewers, you know, will, will, you know, they've got a pick of um, a good old mix there to take something away if, if not already, just to feel more confident in taking things forward. So just one final question. Any other final thoughts on embracing um, flexible working in the trust that maybe we haven't already covered or you just want to highlight one more time? I think we probably all need to role model. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's probably something that's really important and have to talk more openly about it. That's it for me. It's that role model. Yeah. So actually, rather than the conversation starts, it's conversation out loud with someone else, mm -hmm. or maybe three or four people, and being those change, change agents. And that's not dramatic, kind of big firework. It's just that start of the conversation, actually, what does it mean to you? What you know themselves. Yeah. Like about it, what you're wrong. Yeah. yeah, but I think about I'm going for my lunch now, and there's a huge box. Mm. It's a tiny thing, it probably would be massively powerful, wouldn't it? Yeah, and that's how you change the culture, isn't it? Like a little bit, it's a bit of distance. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, just going to move the camera around again. Thank you, ladies. So lots of uh, good discussion there, and I'm just going to highlight a couple of points that I've heard, such as what really came through nice and strongly was um, discussions, don't make assumptions, um, people might be concerned or worried, share things. It was about, I heard that people saying, making a commitment, sometimes we could just share it with one other person, I'm going to have my lunch today, it makes you actually do it, which is a great thing. Um, we heard the, the points about trust and trusting staff and also really useful about trialing if you're not sure about flexible working pattern or a request have a discussion have a talk about it and, and why you know why not have a trial um, and it may be, need to be tweaked um, we also heard that um, sometimes it doesn't have to be huge changes it may just be really small things but those small things can be so important to people and really help improve engagement with others um, Something else that was useful was about teams and having a solution. So if you're a manager that's um, uh, presented with a flexible working request, for example, or a change, it doesn't necessarily have to all come from you. You don't have to find all the solution yourself. Sometimes opening up, not only having the discussion with an individual, but with a wider team to help that um, engagement from all can be quite powerful. Um, and also heard uh, towards the end there about role modelling. Let's all role model for the benefit of us all in the trust. So thank you very much, ladies. A final thought we're going to leave you with, and you can see on the final slide, this is a quote from an MBT manager in the last couple of months, which I'll read out. We tend to think about why we reject a flexible working request rather than consider a less than traditional way of working at the, oh, excuse me, and potential positives of smarter working. And I thought that was quite a useful quote and you know hopefully we can change on that but it was interesting that a manager could see that but could also see the benefits and I just want to share that was from um, a survey through um, uh, Jacob Wilding who joined us in the summer from uh, University of West of England um, for his uh, project uh, with the trust on flexible working that was a live uh, manager quote. So we come to the um, end of our webinar today, but just to remind you all of ongoing support and guidance, um, including work-life balance, flexible working, don't forget that we have our people and transformation daily manager advice sessions, um, health and well-being, and all the activities that we've got um, in Guy's team, um, includes carer support, so get in contact with the team if you want to know more there. Uh, specific MBT policies, we've got flexible working policy, a retirement user guide, and don't forget the special leave policy, that may be useful as well, particularly for uh, short-term, perhaps uh, temporary needs. Um, and we're working on a flexible working brochure to provide you with some more um, guidance and toolkit information and practical examples, which we will be putting on the HR portal when that's finished. And do make use of your trade union representatives who can be you know, extremely supportive in these matters. 
And in addition, you can see on the slide, don't forget to connect with us in all the normal ways. Um, Twitter, advice sessions, um, through the Happy app, and of course, emailing the team. And that leads me to say thank you, everyone. A particular thank you to our panel guests today. Being really uh, useful discussion. I uh, enjoyed that. Um, and just ask um, all of our viewers to um, leave us some thinking about how we can just make those tweaks um, and to work forward with a smarter working and helping our work-life balance. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.